Okay, colleagues. So today I'll be taking you through the introduction to the new Mendeley Reference Manager. Um, as much as we still refer to it as the new one, it has, has been around for at least about a year now. Okay, during my presentation, you'll see the difference between the old desktop version as well as new reference manager product. Okay, so Mendeley is a free reference management software. Okay, when I say free, Mendeley has a free storage space of up, up to two gigabytes. Um, should you need to upgrade your space to um, accommodate more references, then that's when you'll start paying for additional space on Mendeley. But basically the standard account is free and you can generally do everything. And it's rare that you'll have to upgrade your space for additional um, storage. Okay, so to create a Mendeley account, it's very easy. You just create a Mendeley account on the screenshot on the left-hand side of the screen. You can create the account using um, any email domain. It can be a Gmail, it can be an institutional email. Um, for those of you who have an existing Elsevier um, uh, login details, for instance, if you've uh, logged into Science Direct or you have a Scopus ID, those details can work well with Mendeley as well. So you can skip the registration phase. Okay, so for you, you then proceed to the sign in option instead of creating a new account. Okay, so Mendeley is also an Elsevier product. Elsevier is a publishing company that owns um, Scopus Science Direct. So this is just an overview of Mendeley and the basic and um, features that uh, will assist you with your research and managing your references. Okay, so Mendeley has an organizing feature where it allows you to build a reference library. You can export references from different platforms such as databases, as well as importing um, PDF documents into your library. And you can organize this according to collections or folders, and I'll show these to you shortly. On Mendeley, you are also able to collaborate using the function or a feature known as groups. In the groups, you can create a group of up to 25 team members where you send invitations to each and every individual person to join your group. On your group, you are able to, to share documents and share insights and start discussions on relevant references. The Mendeley Reference Manager also has a read and annotation feature using the notebook feature where you can highlight text, um, create sticky notes, and you can create a notebook on the Mendeley platform. The other exciting feature of Mendeley is the built-in search feature, which um, allows you to search for research within Mendeley. So instead of stepping out of the resource to find information on uh, databases, you would then find the, the materials within Mendeley on the search feature. So this is also one of the exciting features that comes with Mendeley. So you can generally import and export references. I'll show you these shortly practical demonstration. On Mendeley, you are also able to integrate the um, citation plugin um, to your Microsoft Word document so that you can insert citations in your document as well as create automated bibliographies. Um, one of the features that Mendeley comes with is it has two different um, applications. One is available through the web. So we also have the web application as well as the desktop application. So the web application, you can, is like an online account that you can access anywhere and it's not bound. Then the difference between the two is that the desktop application will be bound to your device, the one which you installed it on, but that does not stop you from installing your desktop application on many devices. So the layout of the web application and that of the desktop application doesn't differ much. Um, I'll just point you out to the minor differences that are available on the reference manager desktop during the practical demonstration. But generally everything is the same um, and the account sync, online application syncs with the desktop application. So anything that you add onto your Mendeley web app or the desktop app will sync and will reflect in uh, both platforms. In the case where you have installed your desktop application, you happen to lose the device 
or something happens, um, that does not necessarily mean that you have lost your life references because you can always go back to the web application um, and access your library and also re-download and install the desktop application. So on the left hand side of my screen we have the web application on the right hand side screen, we have the desktop application. Alisa, sorry to interrupt. I see Sheila Daniels is saying this up. Uh, okay. Sheila, uh, good morning, everyone. My apologies um, for wanting to ask a question so early on. Um, but I just wanted to know, each faculty has its own referencing guide. Um, I just want to know, does Mendeley, can you um, change the type of referencing that you do on Mendeley, or is it only specific to certain faculties? Um, and how do you use, um, how do you um, set Mendeley's functions according to the referencing style guide? of your faculty, because we are in the law faculty and we use our, the Harvard method of referencing. Um, so I just want to know, is that a possibility with Mandalay? Can I use the Mandalay for referencing as well? Um, because my faculty has a very unique way of referencing. Um, thank you, Sheila, for your message. Um, yes, you can customize Mandalay um, output styles. So Mandalay currently has uh, the different output styles, your Chicago, your Harvard, your Vancouver, your APA, um, but should that referencing style not meet the standards of your faculty, as you say, then there is a way to customize the recording, but it can get very technical, So, but it can be done. So you can uh, customize it to suit your needs. Um, currently, Mendeley has a, a problem where it cannot accommodate footnotes referencing styles. And I know with the law faculty, um, there is a referencing style that requires the use of footnotes, but currently this version of Mendeley is not supporting the, 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 the footnote styles. But if you are saying you use Mendeley, as long as um, uh, Harvard, that, as long as that Harvard doesn't use um, the footnoting style, you'll be able to customize it according to your needs. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Okay. Um, okay, so the Mendeley Reference Manager uh, has the three components that you need to integrate for it to work well and give you the best result. So your first download that you need to do is the Mendeley Reference Manager desktop application. Once you've downloaded that on the right hand side of my screen, I have a menu that you will get from the Reference Manager desktop application where under tools, you'll be able to uh, install the web importer and install Mendeley site for Microsoft, that is the citation plugin, as well as search uh, for online articles. So the first download is the Reference Manager which is a desktop application. Then you proceed to downloading your Mendeley web importer and your Mendeley site. So the Mendeley web importer um, imports papers and web pages from different platforms and databases into your Mendeley library. And currently it's supported by the three major browsers and the four major browsers, which are Chrome, Safari, Firefox, and Edge. Then the other download that you need to do is the Mendeley citation plugin that is integrated into Word to allow you to insert in-text citations as well as generate automated bibliographies. So the compatibility of this plugin is currently uh, with Microsoft Office 365 and Microsoft Word versions from 2016 and above. Okay, initially I had thought um, the 2013 version was also supported, but I had a user who had battled to uh, insert uh, and download the, in the site, the plugin on his 2013 um, Microsoft. So it has been updated to, or to be compatible from 2016 and above. Okay, so Mendeley arranges and organizes your references into smart collections. So these are the automatic ones. When you create a Mendeley account, you'll find this there. As soon as you start populating your library with uh, 
references, then you have recently added references under the recently added folder. Under recently read, you'll have a display of all the PDF documents that you've recently opened up until the past 30 days. Uh, under favorites, you'll have all the references that you have marked as favorites in your library. Under my publications, if you are an established author who have to have established through Scopus index journals, then your publication will also be displaying um, under my publications. And I will show you how to um, sync your Scopus author ID to the Mendeley publication shortly. Then under Trash, you'll have all your deleted items from the last 30 days. In your Trash, you have the option to restore your references as well as to delete them permanently. So that's why it, they, they hang around for at least 30 days to decide what you want to do with them. Okay, so the smart collections are the default collections that you'll find in your Mendeley account, but you are also able to create other custom collections where you can group your readings according to themes, according to chapters, or according to the various projects that you may be working on. Then we also have another feature which is known as Mendeley Notebook. This is where you can open up your PDFs, read the documents within the Mendeley platform, and also um, highlight text and make notes to share with anyone that you may be sharing the references with. You can also make notes to yourself, for instance, to say, okay, this piece of information is interesting, I'm going to read it later, or making notes that um, the text actually relates to something that you've read before. So you can use the Mendeley Notebook in various ways. Okay, so Hello. one of the... Sorry to interrupt again. I see we have another hand, um, Sean Temas. Um, can I just ask everybody to let Annalisa first complete and then have a question and answer session, please? But um, Sean, you can come, uh, you can go on uh, with your question, please. Okay, thank you for that. Um, yeah, thank you for allowing the question. I just... I uh, had a question on the uh, Microsoft Word. So I've only got Microsoft Word 2010. Um, mm -hmm. Is there no way around that uh, to be able to actually get that feature than if you've got a Microsoft Word, which is an okay. older version than what they allow? Sean, unfortunately, um, there isn't a way around uh, that. Um, the only thing I'd advise you to do is to contact our ICS service desk to help you install the latest version of Microsoft Word. Um, micro, the Microsoft Package is free for all registered students of UWC, so you can just contact them to upgrade to the latest version of Microsoft Word. Otherwise, from Mendeley's side, um, the product has now been uh, updated to work with 2016 and above. Thank you so much. I wasn't aware of that. Thank you. OK, thanks, Sean. All right, um, let me continue. So one of the exciting features of Mendeley is the Mendeley Online Search, which is uh, the built-in search feature. So the Mendeley Search um, discovers a search from the Mendeley Web Catalog and open access content. Okay, so the Mendeley Web Catalog is a collection of all references that Mendeley users put in their uh, accounts and libraries. Okay, so... Uh, this is where, where you'll find that some of the references on the Mendeley web catalog will not have PDF documents because perhaps they are subscribed content. Um, in the case where it's open access, then you'll find the PDF document attached. And this is where the use of uh, your institutional email address comes in very handy when you are creating an account. Because then if Mendeley web catalog has references that um, your institution pays subscription subscription for, then it will be easy for you to download the PDF and access it. Okay, so um, the Mendeley Online Search allows you to also directly um, add references to your Mendeley library without stepping out of the platform. Then uh, with the Mendeley Online feature, we have the recommendations feature that comes with it. Um, the recommendation feature allows you to set up your notifications so that you may get recommendations of readings and references relating to those that are in your library. So you need to activate this to have uh, 
to have to receive the, the weekly notifications. Otherwise, if you haven't set it up, then uh, you won't be receiving the notifications. You can always go back to disable them once you feel that uh, you don't need them anymore. Okay, so some of you in the session might have noticed that I'm referring to the new Mendeley Reference Manager, uh, whereas existing members of Mendeley may be familiar with the older desktop version. Okay, so on my screen currently, I have um, a screenshot of the old desktop version of Mendeley, um, which has been replaced by the Mendeley Reference Manager desktop application. Okay, so currently there's still uh, confusion around the two, but um, you can still use both applications on your device. So you can have your Mendeley older version installed as well as the newer version. Um, so the good news Sorry, your mic is on mute. Sorry about that. Thank you for alerting me. Okay, so the Mendeley desktop version has been replaced by the newer desktop version, which I've been referring to throughout my presentation. But uh, the good news for desktop um, holders is that you can have both applications installed on your device. But the bad news is that um, in the long run, the desktop application will be phased out and you won't be able to log in anymore. Okay, so according to Mendeley notices, from the 1st of September, all new users who haven't downloaded or created a Mendeley account will not be able to download the older version. You will only be able to download the newer uh, reference manager version. Okay, but the existing users of Mendeley will still be able to sign in and sync uh, they are libraries, but in the long term, Mendeley will start stopping all the sign-ins uh, in the desktop version. I know here there are days, but I have, a, I have a experienced users who can no longer sync their desktop version um, references, and they are experiencing, experiencing quite a few other issues with the older version. So my advice is you can start migrating from your Mendeley desktop to the newer version before um, it starts giving you all the problems that it may have. Okay, so I've reached the end of my PowerPoint slides. Now I'm going to move over to the practical demonstration of uh, the Mendeley resource. Okay, so on my on my desktop, I have the old version, the old version of Mendeley. Like I said, you can still have your older version as well as your newer version both installed on your computer, and that shouldn't be giving you any problems. So this is the old version of Mendeley that I'm referring to, the one that is going to be phased out um, soon. Okay, so I'm not going to go. I just wanted to point you out to it that I actually have the two installed here. Then I have my Mendeley Reference Manager. Okay, so I'm going to come back to that. So what I'm going to do now, I'm quickly going to the library website, our library web page. Um, so on our library web page, I'd like to point you out to the research portal. On the research portal, I'm going to click on information and research guides. Okay, okay on information and research guides, I'll okay. go to the library research tools group and scroll down to UWC library postgraduate research support guide. Okay, so okay, this is a guide so that has been put together by me for postgraduate research support. It contains um, all the resources and information that will assist you with your postgraduate research. So I'd like to point you to the Mendeley tab just right here. So if I click on Mendeley, um, there is information on what Mendeley Reference Manager is and what it can do. I have a short video introducing the new Mendeley Reference Manager and a few slides to tell you um, other features of Mendeley. Then I have these clickable images where you can click to download um, and install 
the reference uh, manager desktop application, the web importer, and the Mendeley site. Okay, so I'm pointing you out to these um, so that in the case where um, you can't access Mendeley um, using other methods, you can always refer back to the information and research guides of the library. Okay, so I'm going to close that. Now I'm going to go to the Mendeley URL, mendeley.com. Okay, so this is the screen that I had in my PowerPoint presentation. If you don't have a Mendeley account already, then you click on create free account, or you click on create free account um, right at the top. So you can choose any of these. If you already have an existing account, then you just click to proceed to sign in. Okay, so if you click on create accounts, okay, because I've already created an account and this device uh, detects that I have uh, existing uh, email accounts, it won't give me the option to register, but it's a simple, simple, simple process. You just click on register where you have the option then you enter your email address, whichever email address you want to create your account with. Um, remember, you've got the option to use your institutional email address as well as your personal Gmail address. You notice on my screen, I actually have two accounts uh, uh, on Mendeley. The one I have uh, signed up using my institutional email. The other one I have signed up using my personal Gmail address. Okay, so in the case where you use your institutional email and you happen to leave the institution at some point in your life, um, there's no train smash with Mendeley. There is a feature to, to change your email address to whatever email you'd be using so that you don't lose your account. But in the case where um, you don't have access to, you, do, you, 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 you don't do these changes and your access has been um, uh, disabled from the institution then, you run the risk of, use, of losing your account. So you must actually do the change before whilst you still have access to your institutional email. Okay, so I'm going to proceed to sign in on this one. Uh, because I've already created the account, I'm just going to insert my password. Then I click on sign in. Immediately when I sign in, I land onto the Mendeley web application. So now I'm on the web application. On the web application, the default landing page is the search feature. So I land onto the screen where there is an option to search for articles. On the top right hand side of my screen, there's an option to go to the library. The library is the one that you, you build up, you have your list of references and everything. Then after that, you have, you have the link displaying. This is where you can set up your settings for the notifications and other things. Okay, let's actually do that. I'll click on my settings. Okay, so under settings, I can upload my profile photo. And this is where you can change your email address should you be aware that you believe in the institution, um, maybe in the next month or so, you'd rather want to um, change this email address whilst you are here and you can access your institutional email because Mendeley will send a notification to that email to say um, you are trying to change your account details and uh, uh, just a few confirmation links. Okay, and then here under the account, uh, under Scopus profile, this is where you can connect your Scopus profile if you are a, a, an established author who publishes with Scopus index databases. This is where you can connect your Scopus profile to your Mendeley account for all your publications to be listed under your publications. And under notifications, this is where you can uh, set up your email notifications so you can able and disable the options. So uh, it's my say yes, I want to be suggestion for articles based on my Mendeley library. Okay, then you click on save changes. Once that is done, then uh, you'll start receiving um, email notifications according to uh, the recommendations by Mendeley. Right at the bottom where there is an option to subscribe subscription, 
So the subscription part, this is where it tells me that you've got at least two gigabytes of Mendeley storage. And should you wish to upgrade, as you see here, it's indicating that it's free, but as soon as you want to upgrade the storage space, then there will be costs involved. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to my search. Sorry, um, Lisa. Um, can I just can I just ask everybody to to mute yes, themselves, no. please? And um, people is asking you to to speak a bit louder, please, Annalisa, if it's possible. Okay, Jack. Thank you. I'm going to try. Mm. Okay, so I'm back to the Mendeley search uh, landing page. Um, so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to my library. So once you've created your Mendeley library and you don't have any accounts and um, any references in it, this is what it's going to look like until you have um, um, references loaded here. So these are the custom smart collections that you find your all references, your recently added, recently read and favorites. And then they under collections, you will have the collections that you set up yourself. For instance, I have a collection folder of my chapter one readings, as well as my chapter two and my EndNote imports. To create a new collection, you just um, type in where it says um, collection. Then I can quickly create another folder for my research methodology and readings. So in this case, I would be populating my library with readings and then I want to separate the ones that are for research methodology to this folder. Okay, so I've now created this folder, but again, you are able to create a folder within a folder. So I just right click on my initially created folder then I click new collection, um, research methodology, then maybe I can say, um, research design or any other headings you may have. Okay, so now it's created a subfolder within the main collection. So you can populate these according to this. So this is how you can organize um, references under your customized Mendeley collections. Also right at the bottom, you have the groups, uh, which is the collaborative feature where you can set up groups um, for assignments, for projects and task teams. Okay, so you can easily just delete a group when you no longer need it. Okay, so this one, this group, I have been invited uh, on it by another member. So I can opt to leave the group. And for the groups that I have created, I can actually delete the group from my side. Okay, and I can actually create another group. Um, I will say, uh, So I'm just creating another group. For instance, let's say it's just for task team two. I just click where it says create group and press enter on your keyboard. Um, then your group will be sitting there. So until you start populating the group with readings, there won't be anything in the group. So to add uh, members to the group, you just right click, manage group, and then um, invite members. Then you start typing the email addresses. Okay, so you may type in as many email addresses as possible. And then you can send um, the invitations and batch. Okay, so I've typed in two email addresses to one of my colleagues. Then I click on send invites and this, the invites have been sent, they'll sit under pending invites. Once these two individuals accept these on their side, then they'll come sit under our members. So everything that I put in this folder will be shared with all the people invited onto this group. Okay, so in the middle of the pane, this is where our references are going to sit when you have populated um, the, 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 the library and we'll have a pane where we are able to edit um, our readings. Okay, 
let me go to those instances again. Okay, so now I'm on the search of Mendeley. I am quickly going to type in searching words, meningitis, and I, sorry, can I just ask, when you're using a search engine of um, Mendeley, um, does mm -hmm. that filter through all the other UWC database searches or how does it work? Because I see, I did see they say search through more than 100 million articles. But for example, we have um, these specific engines on um, the database, A to Z databases on the UWC. Does it filter through all their databases or is this Mendeley's own system? This is Mendeley's own system. Um, this is the Mendeley's web catalog. So it searches through all the references that Mendeley holders have placed onto their accounts. Then if you have signed in using your institutional email, it also searches um, through your university subscribed to databases as well as open access content. If you search through the, if you log in with your UWC credentials, it will search through the, the A to Z databases as well. Not necessarily the A to Z database, but um, uh, Scopus and um, Science Direct, the Elsevier products. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, because remember this: uh, you use um, if you if you use your Elsevier author ID, then it links to all the content that is uh, subscribed to through Science Direct and Scopus, but not the not necessarily the A to Z list of databases. Yeah, thank you. That's very helpful. Thank you so much. Okay. So on my search, I quickly typed in um, keywords, meningitis and infant mortality, and I came up with these results. Um, also, if you notice, um, sorry, I didn't get your name, um, uh, the recent question. On the left-hand side of my screen, I only have 132 results. So that is an indication that it is quite a very small scope that this search feature is searching within. Otherwise, we wouldn't have 132 results if it's searched across the A to Z list of databases. Okay, so here on the left pane, we have the search filters where you can refine your results according to the year, the document type, journal title, and so on. In the middle, we have the actual details of the items. And um, it, there is an indication that the item is open access and if there is a PDF document attached to it, um, and so on. Okay, so if you wish to add these to your library, then you simply click on add to library. Once it starts to save you in library, um, then you can click there. Then it takes you to your Mendeley reference um, web application. And it's telling you that um, you actually import, exported a file and it's sitting there the time it's added at 9.38. Under file, there is no indication that there is a PDF document attached to this file. Okay, let's uh, import a few more and see what is going to happen. So I'll click on the second one, click on uh, add to my library. And if I go to my reference uh, accounts, then it's sitting there as well. It also doesn't have a PDF document. Okay, so in the case where there is no PDF document attached to the reference, you are able to click on the reference. If you are lucky, you will get an option that says get PDF. If I click there, then it starts uploading the and sourcing the PDF. Then here is my PDF and it's actually opened in my notebook. Okay, so I go back to my library, close this. Okay, so now under the file column, I do have an indication that there is a PDF document attached to this reference. Okay, so with the second one, let's see. Um, okay, so there isn't the option to get the PDF. So what you can do here, you can click on files, then you can go to your, you can maybe download the PDF from elsewhere, save it on your desktop or any storage um, location, then you just attach the file and it starts uploading and there it's uploaded. If you close this, then we should have a PDF icon indicating. Okay, so what I, I recently done now, I just attached any file, but the file is not really the reference that we have here. Attaching files to your Mendeley account is not necessary. 
um, not unless you want to read your PDF documents within Mendeley. Okay, so it's not uh, a complete must, but it is a good um, thing to have. Because for instance, if you're going to be using the notebook, then you must have your PDFs loaded into, um, into your Mendeley account so that you can open them up here like this. Okay, but if you're just using it for the purpose of sending your references to it, then there's no need for you to be um, attaching all the files. Okay, so I currently have two references. Um, then if I go back to my library, to my search, I'm just gonna add one more. Okay, then if I go to my reference, it's telling me that I've added another one um, at 9.41. Okay, sometimes the metadata for the articles may appear uh, with errors. Um, sometimes it can come in capital letters, the title, can, the title can come in capital letters. And the only way for you to fix that is to do a manual edits of the reference. Okay, so you'd be able to click, um, you just click on the reference, then it opens up the edit and information page. Then it tells you that it's a general article. If you need to delete anything here, you can do that. Um, if there was no uh, source, you could change the source here. If there was no date of publication, you can insert the date of publication here. Or if for instance, it's incorrect, you can edit it to what uh, is correct. So I just removed 2002 and I inserted 2020 and it immediately updates on my list. Okay, so it's updating. So I'm just doing this for demonstrating uh, purposes. All right, so if I close that, you can do that with all references. You can just go there, um, just double check if everything looks right. Um, if you, all your capitalization is okay. Um, remember, if you have errors in your library, these errors will also duplicate in your in-text citations as well as your automated bibliography. So if for whatever reason you don't have a date of publication for an item, that will also um, be duplicated in your in-text citation as well as your automated bibliography. So it's always best to just run over quickly and check if everything is okay. All right, so that is one method of adding references onto um, your Mendeley library. Okay, there's many other um, methods uh, where you can use your Mendeley um, and add references to your account. Okay, so I'm going to go back now to the search landing page. Okay, so on the search landing page, you've got the option just below the search box to download the desktop reference manager. Okay, so once you've downloaded the desktop uh, reference manager, this is what it's going to look like. So, so I'm going to log into mine because I've already downloaded it. So I click on continue. Let me just open it again. Okay, my apologies for the delay in opening up the reference manager. Uh, hopefully it loads in a few seconds. Let me, let me try it again. Okay, so I've successfully logged into my Mendeley desktop application now. Okay, so I've moved away from the web application. I'm now in my desktop application. I might have mentioned before that the minor difference with the desktop application and the web application is that there's just the menu 
on the top right hand side of the screen. So it's just this little corner here that is uh, that distinguishes the web application from the desktop application. So on the web application, we don't have this corner over here, but on the desktop application, we have these um, options and we have the tools options where you can download and install your web importer. And the second option is where you can download and install your Mendeley citation plugin for your web. Okay, and then again, if you need to go back to the online search, you can access it via the tools um, menu. Okay, so again, the left hand uh, layout, my, my smart collections and all the references I created on the web application are reflecting here, emphasizing that the web application and the desktop application, they sync well together. So all the references that I had imported using uh, my web application, they are also sitting here. Okay, so I did point you out uh, to the tools where you can install and download the two additional downloads that um, integrate with the Mendeley Complete um, Package. Okay, so from here, we're going to explore how to add references using other methods. So uh, already I've already shown you how to add references from within the built-in search of Mendeley. Then now I'm going to show you how to add references um, by importing files from your computer. So let's say you have a folder sitting on your desktop currently with loads and loads of PDF documents, and you would like to import this to Mendeley. So you can quickly go on to add new files from computer. Okay, then you locate the PDFs. Okay, so I'm going to highlight the first three from my PDF collection. Then I click on open. It's telling me that it's uploading three files. And yes, it's uploaded. Um, okay, it's, so far it's uploaded just one file. Let's give it just a few seconds before it uploads the other two. Okay, it's uploaded the second one. I select two files. Okay, I might have selected only two files. Uh, okay. All right, I did select three. Okay, so my three files are uploaded. It's telling me that my three files are uploaded. And these are the three files that are just uploaded now, two at 9.47 and one just at 9.48. Fortunately, for these three, my PDF file was attached. So already I have my PDF document attached to my reference. So I don't have to go the extra mile of attaching the PDF document. Okay, so everything looks fine. Date of publication, the authors, the titles and the sources of where these come from. Okay, again, you can proceed to add different documents. So I'll do this again, files. This time I'm going to, <clears throat> to add two thesis documents from our research, uh, from our ETD repository. So I'm going to click on open. Okay, it's uploading two files. My two files are uploaded. Okay, so this is a collection of my thesis and dissertations that I had initially downloaded from the UWC Scholar ETD repository. Okay, so I've uploaded the files. If I click on the file, it's telling me that the reference type is a report. Okay, so Mendeley is able to detect what kind of a reference you are importing into the database. Okay, with the journal articles, it's telling us, uh, okay, this one is unspecified. You might want to change this to a journal article because then if it's unspecified, it means even in your list of references, it won't be cited as journal article. So those are some of the things that you just need to check. And you can obviously check this once, once you've created your automated bibliography, you just run through it and check if everything is correct. Okay, so with the recently um, imported files, you'll notice that my titles are in caps. And this is where I said, again, you need to change this. Otherwise it will appear like this in your list of bibliography as well. Okay, there is no date of publication. So here you just go and open the PDF document and then populate um, the date of publication. Let's say for instance, maybe this article was um, this thesis 
was submitted in 2019. So I go and enter my 2019 date, then close this. Then it is updated here as a 2019 um, thesis. If it's not updated here, again, I will emphasize, if you try to insert this as an in-text citation without a date, then even in your web document, there won't be a date of publication. In your list of references, if you haven't fixed these um, capitalization issues, these will also reflect in your list of references. Okay. Now, the second method of finding um, reference uh, articles and adding them to your Mendeley library is to add a manual entry. In the case where you have a DOI identification, the, the ID that sits with every article that has been published online, you can put it here. Um, digital object identifiers usually are available in the record of the article or somewhere, then you can just quickly um, copy and paste them, put them here, and then they will bring up every information that you have. Okay, let's see if we can try it with one of the articles that are here. Okay, so I'm going to copy this uh, DOI. Add, add entry manually, then I just paste this here. Then I click on search, it's looking up the metadata. And yes, it has managed to pull everything that is related to this article. Okay, so it's pulled up the reference type, it's pulled up the title, and it's pulled up um, the authors and the journal from which this article comes from and the date of publication and everything. Okay, so in this case, what I would do, I would just click on add entry. Okay, then it will be added on uh, as one of my references. Okay, so I'm just quickly going to delete this because I do have the reference already in my account. Okay, the other method for a manual entry is actually adding your references manually. For instance, I'm going to make an example of a book. Well, sometimes the records of an item may not be available electronically anyway, meaning that you are not able to import the reference um, electronically. So I'm going to pretend that I want to add a manual reference and the type of reference is a book. Okay, so the title of my book is Introduction to Research Methods. The author is Mendem Karapo and Elisa. The year of publication is 2019. Okay, because this is a book that I'm trying to record here, there won't be uh, pages and volume. Uh, I won't even insert the edition, okay, because this is just for demonstration purposes. Then the city where my book was published is Cape Town. Okay, the publisher is uh, UWC, UWC Press. Okay, be, uh, please be aware that I'm making all of this up. Okay, so the publisher is UWC Press. Then I click on add entry. Okay. And my entry has been um, entered into my Mendeley account. Okay, I don't know, maybe I might have uh, clicked twice, which is why it's been added twice. Okay, but anyways, you can quickly create a reference manually as I have demonstrated, you'll have your year of publication in the case where there is a source it will be displaying here. Yeah, and so on. Okay, let me delete these. Okay, let's leave that. Then the other method of uh, importing references to your Mendeley library is using the import library option, which is the bib text file format, the EndNote XML and RIS. Okay, so all these options work, but please be aware that um, during my session, I'll show you one example of each. 
just to make you aware that there's various ways you can use to export references from databases, but it doesn't mean that you, 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 you must use all of them. Sometimes it will also go according to your personal preferences. Okay, so the BIP text um, method, I'll show you now quickly. Then the end note one, I won't be demonstrating on this session, but there is a way to uh, migrate your EndNote library. For instance, if you're using the other reference management software, which is EndNote, and you want to move over to uh, Mendeley Reference Manager, you won't have to start your library from scratch. You can simply export your library from EndNote using the XML um, file format. And then when you get here, you click on Add New, Import Library, then you go and find and attach the EndNote XML file. Okay, then the BIP text and RIS I'm going to show to you just now. Okay, so on the library homepage, I'm now on the library homepage. I'm going to click on the search box without typing anything. Then I'm going to sign in. Okay. Okay, then I'm quickly going to do a search. Um, meningitis and meningitis and infant mortality. Okay, then I click on set. Okay, so my search is currently defaulted on everything. Should I wish to find articles only, then I'll click there. Should I wish to find physical items, I'll click there. Ebooks, I would also have that option. Okay, so I'm gonna leave it like that because this is just for demonstration purposes. Okay, so I'm just going to click on the, the two articles here. Once I click on those two articles, then I click on those three dots. I've got the Mendeley direct export option available on uh, Ukwaz search. But if you notice next to it, there is also the BIP text um, export format as well as the uh, RIS format. So on some databases, you have one or two of these options available. And like I said, it's according to your preference, which one you'd like to use. Okay, so I'm going to click on Mendeley. Okay, so once I've clicked on Mendeley, it's asking me to proceed using my account. Then it's exporting to Mendeley over here. When it's done, it will tell me that it's exported. Okay, then that's great. Let me go and check in my Mendeley library if that is actually the case. Yes, that is the case. My two references have been moved over to my Mendeley library and they're sitting there. And if I can look briefly, it looks like everything is all right, so I'm not gonna show you this on this platform, but I'm gonna show you elsewhere. Okay, so again, the Mendeley Web Importer works with most databases. So on the Ukwaz search, you've got the direct export uh, option, but you may also use your Web Importer, which is sitting, I've pinned it on my uh, browser right at the top. So this is what your Mendeley Web Importer should look like when you have installed it successfully. Okay, so if I click there, okay, so it's asking me to sign in. Okay. All right, so I'm signed in. Um, and on this page, there are currently 10 references. So the last one is the 10th one. And Mendeley Web Importer is able to detect these 10 references that are listed here. So instead of using the direct export, you also have the option to use the web importer. So you can just select the references that you want. And then from the web importer, you are able to export the references directly to your main, main list of references. Or from here, you can directly import your references to the chapters in your library. So I'm going to click on chapter one and click on it. Okay, so it's telling me that uh, I can view in my library and it's ticked the reference, meaning that it's moved over. So let's go and check under my 
Mendeley Library under chapter one if those references are there. And yes, um, they are in all in my all references folder as well as my chapter one folder. So I imported references from Ukwazi using the direct export as well as the web importer. Okay, so moving on from Ukwazi, I'm going to go to um, the library homepage again. Then I'm going to click on Google Scholar just below the search box. Okay, so on the search box, I'm just going to punch in uh, any search keywords, okay. Then here on Google Scholar, we don't have the option to import um, to Mendeley directly, but we do have the option to import to BIP text. This you can set up um, under the menu on Google Scholar. You go to advanced, uh, you go to settings. Then where it says bibliography manager, you can change this to bib text, or you can change this to EndNote or RefWorks so or any reference manager. So I've currently defaulted mine on bib text. So I've got the option to import the references to, to bib text. The disadvantage with the bib text format is that I'll have to do each one of these individually. But with the help of the web importer, you can easily export references from Google Scholar using the web importer. So again, I'm going to click on my web importer right at the top. Then once it's located, um, it's identified my references on this list. So it's identified 14 references on this results page. Then I can quickly select the ones that I want. Okay, so I'm going to select about three. So the other nice feature with the web importer is that you can select quite a number of references. Okay, so you notice some of them have PDF uh, indications uh, saying that they are available. Uh, some will not, some are checking. Okay, but again, if it happens that it doesn't move over to your reference manager, then you've got the option to edit, um, to attach it manually. Okay, so from here it's defaulted to the last folder that I imported into. So now I'm going to import to my chapter two folder. Okay, so I'm importing to, I'm exporting to my chapter two folder. Then if you go to the folder and you click on chapter two, Yes, I have three references that I've recently exported from Google Scholar and my PDF, um, my PDF articles are displaying here, they are available. Okay. Now on the A to Z list of databases, I'll click on Scopus, I mean on Science Direct. I click on X for Science Direct, then I click there. Okay, I'm simply going to type in just one keyword. Then I click on Search. Once I have my 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 results, I can uh, search. I can I can click on one article, for instance, this one. Then here I'll have the option. Okay, don't mind you know, these other things that are popping up. Okay, I have the option to add to Mendeley directly. And if I click on that, it opens up my web importer anyways. Okay, and it detects other references that are on this page. Okay, so if I go back, if I go back to select more than one, okay, I'm selecting three, then um, I'll click on export. Then here on the export options, I have the option to export to BIP text. Okay, remember this is the other file format that is uh, compatible with Mendeley. So I click on export citation to BIP text. Okay, and then it's downloading the BIP text file. Then you go to your reference manager. You click on add new, import library. Then you select the BIP text. Um, file. Then you locate the file where it was downloaded and it was downloaded to my downloads folder. There it's indicating that it's a science direct citation um, file and it's indicating that it's a big file. So I click on it and I click on open. Okay, 
And these are the three items that I've just imported. Okay, so you can see I just imported them at 10.05 and all three of them are here, but the PDF documents are not attached and we've already explained how to sort that out. Okay, so that was the BIP text um, option. So you click add new, import library, BIP text, then you go and locate your BIP text file. Okay, so the last database I'm going to export from is Web of Science. So on Web of Science, Okay, so on Web of Science, um, let me just use this keyword that is already here. Okay, then I click on search. Okay, and then I have about 20,000 items. Okay, so on Web of Science, if you click on the web importer, If you click on the web importer, the web importer doesn't work well with uh, Web of Science. I think this is precisely uh, because Web of Science is a product of uh, a company known as Clarative, which owns EndNote, the other reference manager. So um, it's conflicting with other, with other settings um, that are specifically made for it. Okay, so the web importer will not work on Web of Science at all. Okay, so the options that you have, we do have the export option over there. So if I click on the one and the two references, then I click on export. Like I said, Web of Science is owned by the same company that owns EndNote. So you'll have EndNote sitting up right at the top as the functions. But if you go below, you'll find the big text format, which is compatible to Mendeley. And you will also find the RIS format, which I want to demonstrate from this database. Okay, so it's up to you. You can choose the big text file or the RIS file. Sometimes you may encounter technical issues. You find that the one is not working, but the other one is working. Okay, so just be aware that these two, they are able to move over to um, Mendeley. So I'm just going to click on the RIS option. It's telling me that I selected two references, yes. Click on export, uh, choose destination. Okay, just close that. And then you go to your Mendeley reference manager. Then you click on add new, import library. This time, because you downloaded an RIS file, you're going to click on RIS. So I click on RIS, then I locate the downloaded file on my downloads list. Okay, so it's telling me that it's sitting under my downloads and there it is displayed as the RIS formatted file. I click on it, click on open. Okay, so my two references, my two references from uh, Web of Science were imported correctly. Everything looks well, the authors, the date of publication, the title and the source but the file is not attached already. We have discussed how to sort that out. Okay, so I've covered all the import uh, options on the option to add references to Mendeley. Files from the computer, you can import your PDF documents. I've shown you two methods of adding manual entries. I've also shown you uh, how to import BIP text files and RIS files. Okay, so now, um, before we go into the Word document, I'd just like to go to the notebook. Okay, so on my notebook, I already have existing pages where I quickly make um, notes to say, okay, please read this up, or this looks great, or this is a very good um, uh, text for a certain discussion on my work. Okay, so you can do that. You can edit. Um, you can edit your notes and as soon, as soon as you edit your note, it comes and sits right at the top uh, on, under the recently edited notes, okay? And in terms of annotations, you will only see a display of annotations once you go into each and every individual um, reference. So you can't have all annotations for all references here, okay? So let me open one of the references with a PDF file. 
So you click on the file, click on read. Okay, and as soon as you click on read or you open the file, it opens up on your um, Mendeley notebook platform. Okay, so here you are able to highlight your text, select the pencil over there, and then you select a color. Okay, then as soon as you highlight that after selecting the color, then it highlighted. Then again, you can add the annotations here. Okay, so you can insert, um, So I'm just pretending to be making a very useful note that I don't want to forget regarding this reference. Okay, so if I'm sharing this document with someone, the person whom I'm sharing this document with will be able to see these notes and also respond to whatever I've written there. Okay, so once I finish typing my sticky note, it stays there. And then that's when it goes and sits under my annotations. So if I'm sharing this um, with Jacques and Jacques comes in and also adds or responds to my comment, all those annotations will be sitting here. And um, in the long run, it, that will be a sort of a collaboration and a discussion going on. Okay, so back to the library. I'm sorry, doesn't the highlights pick up when you highlight it? Won't it pull through into one document? Because I'm, I'm, I know you're saying the annotations pull through, but does the highlights not been pulled through? In what way? Document, because at the beginning, I think you said in the, in the introduction that the highlights will pull through as well. I'm not, I might be speaking under correction, but um, if you highlight, um, and you, like, for example, I normally write down every single sentence that I highlight, but I don't want to do that. I want to do it electronically. So when you mm -hmm. highlight in Mendeley, Mendeley, doesn't the highlights from all the documents pull through into a single PDF? No, 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 no. Like I said, um, they don't they don't filter through each and every PDF. You only access them once you get into the specific reference. Okay, so now I am on this PDF and I will see the annotations I made here. But in terms of the notebook, you can make notes on the notebook and you can access the notes you made on the notebook across all references. Okay, so the annotations are specific to the reference and the notes, they are general. You can access them throughout your, your references. Uh, okay, okay, thank you. All right. Okay, so now I'm quickly just wanting to copy some text from these. Um, I just want to copy some text from, okay, let me just copy an abstract. Okay, there we go. Okay, so I'm just quickly going to copy this text for the purpose of demonstrating uh, in setting citations on the word document. Okay, so this is my word document. So I'm going to pretend that this is my work and this is where I want to insert my in-text citations. Okay, so you go and open your words. Um, normally it defaults on the home button. Uh, when you want to access the Mendeley site uh, plugin, you go to references and then it will be sitting on the top right hand side of your screen. Okay, so from here, I'll pretend I want to set a reference here. Uh, it starts loading and it will ask me to log in if it hasn't already done so. Okay, so it's asking me to sign in. Then I click on get started. And then I choose one of my accounts. I punch in my, my password. Then I click on sign in. Okay, so it successfully signed me in. So on Mendeley's site, 
I've mentioned at the beginning, the Mendeley uh, web application, the reference manager, the web importer, as well as the citation plugin, they all sync together. So everything that we have in our Mendeley account is going to reflect through this Mendeley citation plugin. Okay, so I want to insert a reference here just after results. Then you simply go to uh, your library and here you have all references. You have the folders as reflected in your uh, main account. Then you have your chapters as well, where you inserted um, your references. Currently my references on chapter one are not reflecting. Okay, this may be due to a sync issue. Okay, so I'll use the ones on my list of references, the main master list. Okay, so I click on the first reference. As soon as I click on a reference, it says insert citation and I do that. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's inserted my citation where my cursor was. Okay, and I don't want it there. I'm going to delete it. Okay, so I want my reference here. Then I click on citation again, click on insert citation, and now it's correctly inserted my reference where I want it to be. Okay, so if it is, it's going to insert um, the author's surname and the date of publication according to the referencing style that you've selected. Okay, so if you need to add a page number to this, you just click on the reference on this side, and then it opens up this uh, pane where you can just type in that, okay, this reference I'm citing here is on page eight. Then you click on save changes. Then it goes and inserts the page number. Okay, so that's one thing that Mendeley won't do for you is to insert your page numbers. Okay, then I carry on writing my work. Okay, then this time I want to insert more than one citation because I'm making a general statement, for example. Then I click on insert two citations and they will be listed here in the chronology of the date of publication. Okay, so this is where the editing of the citation uh, styles comes in. For instance, perhaps your supervisor or the journal that you're writing for would like you to uh, arrange these according to alphabetical order, not according to the date of publication. Okay, so those are the, all the variations that can be achieved through the CSL editor for Mendeley. All right, then I am going to insert another one. Mm. I want to insert a reference that has some errors so that we can all see the importance of yes. I want to insert this one because it has capital letters. And then I click on insert citation. Yes, it's documented the author and the date of publication correctly, but the problem will come with the automated bibliography. Okay, so again, I want to insert the page number. I click there. I insert page two, then I click on save changes. Okay. okay, so now I'm at the end of my um, bibliography, um, at the end of my document, and I want to create an in-text citation, um, an automated bibliography. Okay, so where it says citation styles, if I click there, my account is defaulted on APA 7th edition. If you need to change this style, you can select other styles here. But first, let's just insert the citation so that we can see the difference when we change the styles. Okay, so the automated bibliography is going to insert all the references that are in the body of your work. So if you don't have something here, you can't just select it from the library and then insert it to the bibliography. You must first use it in a, as an in-text citation and then it will be included in your bibliography. Okay, so I'm going to place my cursor here at the bottom, then insert bibliography. It tells me that your bibliography will be inserted at your cursor location. Then I click continue. Okay, and there is my automated bibliography. If you notice the first reference, because we did not edit the capitalization on Mendeley Reference Manager, is also reflecting here. Okay, but if you want to sort this out, then you go to your reference manager, you sort it out, it will also update here. Okay, so that's my automated bibliography. Um, in the case where you need to change your referencing style, your output style, 
Then you can scroll down, for instance, you want to use the Harvard version, then you click on Harvard, then you click on update citation style, and it updates in the in-text um, in the in-text citation as well as the list of the references. So you see here it's updated the list of references as well as um, the, the automated bibliography. And with all the changes that you make, your page numbers will still remain there. You are not going to lose them. Okay, so let's try another one. Let's try nature. So now we are changing the output style of the reference style. I click there and I update citation. Okay, the nature style uses the superscript format of referencing. So you can see all my superscripts there. There's my number four. And in the list of references as well, this has been edited. Okay, if I go to Vancouver, I update my output style again. It updates uh, according to the Vancouver format or referencing rules. Then it has, instead of the authors, it has the number of the reference in brackets. Okay, and if you click on IEEE update citation style, it updates the text citation as well using the square brackets as well as the list of references at the bottom. Okay, in the case where your referencing style that you want to use is not listed here on this default list, you, you select another style. Okay, I'll make an example using the Chicago. Okay, so I'm going to select the Chicago 17th edition, the note, and then click on update style. Okay, so there was a question earlier regarding the law referencing style. So I mentioned that as far as I'm concerned, I know the, refer the law referencing style involves some footnotes and currently Mendeley Reference Manager doesn't support the use of footnotes. That's why we have this error message here, which says Mendeley site does not currently support the use of footnote citation styles. Okay, so if ever you need to use this uh, citation footnotes, currently Mendeley doesn't support um, this on this new version, but However, it is available on the older version. Okay, so that's why they still have the older version available because they are yeah, trying, so we to, to, they are trying to migrate um, all the functionalities fully onto the new um, reference manager. Okay, so in that case, um, you could perhaps use, uh, try and find another style. Okay. So you can choose any and then click on update citation style. Okay, then it's updated to the style that I've just stitched. Okay, so I'm just <clears throat> making you aware that this list that is here is just the default list and there's plenty of other styles um, under select another style option. Okay. Um, I have reached the end of my practical demonstration. I have managed to show you everything I wanted to share with you today. So quickly before we end our session, if there are any questions, would you please um, uh, take the opportunity to ask them now? Sorry that I hear prep is a time to ask, ask questions. Yes, please. Yes, um, I just have one, um, two questions actually. Um, my mm -hmm. first one is, I understand, thank you very much for explaining the how uh, to import from um, your straight from your computer um, on the onto the the desktop um, manager app, and also yes. I also understand how to import from the web now. But I want to okay. know when you are um, when you go to the desktop app. Sorry, if you can just go there. There's just something I want to show you on the yes. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, when you import, like here, yeah, all your articles are picking up on all references. Um, can I then drag my articles from here yeah, straight into chapter one and to chapter two? Yes, um, you can just select. As mm -hmm. soon as you select a reference, it, um, it activates the action pane at the bottom. Then you click on organize, add to group, and then it starts showing you which groups you'd like to add onto. So I'll just select. Um, end note. Okay, so I selected Gautres and Richardson. And if I go there, they are sitting there. Okay. So that's how you move them from 
the main list to the folders. And also, thank you for asking that question. If for whatever reason you feel uh, like you don't um, you don't want to have this reference here, um, deleting the reference here will cause um, problems. Um, so you shouldn't be deleting anything on Mendeley unless you really don't want to use it. Okay, so currently I've noticed that um, problem where you delete uh, an article in the folder, it also gets deleted from the main list. Did you see that? Okay, so if I delete Richardson here, Richardson will also be deleted from the main list. So that's one disadvantage with uh, deleting items for the folders. Okay, but uh, Sheila, I hope I have managed to answer your question on how to yes, remove references. Thank you very much. Oh, that was really, yes, you did. Yes, thank you very much. Um, okay. Can I ask a second question, please? Yes, please. Um, thank you so much. Um, I just also want to know in relation to um, the law faculty um, with customizing, I know you said that the Mendeley, Mendeley currently doesn't do footnoting, but in the event that we need to customize um, our referencing, where, where is the option for that? Or should we book a private session with you then? Because I don't want to take up time from the others as well. Yeah, um, this is, that's, a separate, um, that's a separate website altogether. It's called Mendeley CSL Editor. Okay, so you completely move out of uh, Mendeley and then you go to the CSL Editor and there's instructions on how you can start the process. But like I said, it can get very tedious and technical, but you can approach me and we'll see what we can do. Thank you so much, Annalisa. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you, um, Sheila. Good Hello. Day, yes. Hi. Can I read one of the questions from the chat box, please? Yes. Uh, sorry, sorry, Bongi. Uh, it asks, do you require Wi-Fi to use the Mendeley site function in Word, or is it possible to use the Mendeley site function in Word when you're offline as well? Thank you. Uh, know that um, you cannot use the Mendeley site uh, plugin when you are offline. Also, your desktop application is also um, um, accessed um, with uh, Wi Fi. It works best when you have internet connectivity. So, like I said, the Mendeley developers are still trying to develop all the functionalities we had on the older desktop version, because in the older desktop version, you were able to use your Mendeley citation plugin in Word, as well as access your references without internet connection. But with this new version, that is a bit of uh, a challenge to achieve. So the Mendeley site does not work without um, connectivity. Can I ask now? May yes, I? Yes. How, how can one safeguard the, the collected library when one upgrades from the old to the new version? Okay, because you'll be using your, your, your credentials from your old desktop version, then there's nothing that you are going to lose from your desktop version because it's, it's the same account, it's just that it's moving to a different interface. So there isn't anything that you need to take note of or be careful of, or you run the risk of losing. You will exactly have everything according to the way you had in the desktop, even your folders and your collections, they will all reflect like they are reflecting on the desktop version. The last so currently is... I have my desktop version and my reference manager, but because we're running out of time, I, I won't be- uh, No, no, don't, don't display it. I think your answer is fine. The, the other one is when I do my citation in my work, I sometimes get the initials posted in. How do I get rid of that? Because when you Which do right? citation in a, in, a, in a working document, you don't need the initials of the, of the uh, author. Yes, um, I think that also depends according to the referencing style that you are using. So you might want to change a referencing style that does not include those, or it actually means that 
if there is a differing style that doesn't meet your needs, then we may uh, look at look into customizing that particular style that you are using and remove the initials from the reference. I'll try it, but I'll come back to you if I fail. Thanks. No problem. You're welcome. Hello. Hi. Uh, tell me, what about if in the bibliography it appears that is Chinese or Japanese or some, some kind of funny, I mean, bibliography, how do you, but the article will be actually in English. Did I ask an intelligent question? <laughs> uh, um, I think I've emphasized this uh, over and over. If there is a problem with your um, in-text and uh, bibliography citations, then you have to sort that out in the reference manager. You see where the problem was. If um, there's any translation issues, you also sort all of those out in the Mendeley reference application so that it is sorted there and then it duplicates well in your um, Word document. Okay. But I haven't come across uh, that one with foreign language. Okay, then. thank you. <laughs> thank you. I have, it is an intelligent question, by the way, but I'll, I'll... You are breaking. 